welcome back if you could like comment or subscribe i'd appreciate it there is a tractor going over to train tracks right now wonderful anything to do for the channel helps me put more back in the channel for you there's a reason we're standing at the trunk of the mazda and that is all the stuff that's inside of it i'm gonna try to put a lot of this on the engine we'll see where we go uh that's yeah there's a throttle body connected to the overly complicated manifold we got our uh, alternator in here more of that's for intake stuff oh that's where that wrench was basically a whole nother wiring harness to work with and i think there's a few more bits and pieces in here so i'm gonna get these guys in the garage all right i got a little bit ahead of myself anyway table of parts we are gonna be replacing all the ignition coils i think they were fine but they apparently according to at least internet people who probably have ever had an RX-8 um, <laughs> say that they like to go bad quickly. So I just bought OEM ones to replace those OEM ones with. Uh, we already got the alternator on here. It was a little, uh, a little bit difficult tracking on the bolts because it was not the most organized person. But we got that on here. We got the uh, adjustment bracket on here. And it's ready to go. Uh, let's see make sure everything looks like it's in line with all the uh belts and whatnot kind of not really but i think it works itself out when everything gets on here <sighs> so anyway yeah, these guys are good so i think next i'm gonna put the ignition coil bracket on here and we'll probably wait to put the new ignition coils on it I got the one plug that goes on here right now uh the other plug hooks up from the other harness so, so far so good. All right, progress, progress, progress. Found the uh, bolt that I was missing for that guy. These two are uh, smart enough to leave in the housing, or at least the front plate anyway. So we got that mounted up. I'm uh, pretty sure that, that connects to the throttle body. That connects somewhere in there. Uh, one of those likely goes to some form of math sensor or intake sensor. That goes to the oil pan. Um, this goes down to the transmission and the uh, O2 sensor. This connects to something along with these guys onto the intake manifold or around it. And same with that guy over there, I imagine. Connects to something around there. So from that, everything else is currently accounted for and or plugged in. This obviously plugs massively into the uh, uh, CPU. These Grammy fuckers. Uh, let's see. Those plug into something. Oh, that one plugs in right there. I can actually see that. I'm going to try to clean those guys off first, though. <sighs> so, what's next? Uh, I did get new belts, so those old pieces of shit won't be going on. I want to give this some kind of refreshed uh, reliability. Basically, like something a step above an oil change because you got new spark plugs. I was eating new oil and oil filter. I'm going to be putting, uh, I think I would decide a 10W30 or 10W40 into it since I'm doing a Sone Adapter Bypass. And it's going to be full synthetic, which should greatly actually help uh, com uh, compression, not combustion. <laughs> Although I guess by extension, help combustion. But it'll help compression and uh, help things seal up better, give a little bit more life to the bearings that are in there, which were already still good. So. Just kind of left those guys in. Um, I think at this point we gotta start putting on intake pieces. I just gotta figure out what goes where, honestly. Uh, the relays in there are for the horn and for the uh, fuel pump because I wanted to turn the thing on without spraying fuel everywhere because I think it still has a half a tank of gas. Don't worry, I put fuel stabilizer in there. I think I put. An entire thing of heat and an entire thing of sea foam, and that was when it still had a half a tank of gas, so it should be thoroughly uh, stabilized. Uh, still need to figure out where these hoses go. Probably should have done that before I started putting things like the alternator on, so that's probably going to be the next step, because I recall removing those in here. The rest of this I removed when the engine was not in here. I'm probably going to have to research some videos to see exactly where that stuff's supposed to go, though. Because I don't remember what's what on here. I think... I don't even know. I'm pretty sure that's coolant. I don't know what that is. I don't remember what that is, but I feel like that could be coolant. 
look down in there. I don't know. Eh, it probably couldn't because it looks like it lines up with the jacket housing of the other housings. So, what do I have around here? That's going to be a fuel line into the rails. That needs a vacuum line. There's a vacuum line on there that says free floating. Um, this might be, no, it's, I don't know, it could be vacuum. So I'll have to basically bring those hoses over, just kind of figure out where they're supposed to go. I'll probably just go inside and research a video or two, see what I can see. Um, I think we only had one knock sensor, which is interesting. Obviously, that's the only place that can go. It's kind of the nice part about some of this, unlike the fuel injectors. Uh, it's pretty obvious which uh, ignition coil gets which plug. It's less obvious which ignition coil goes to which uh, housing, but I'm pretty sure it's trailing one, leading one, trailing two, leading two, as trailing, leading, trailing, leading. So that should work out nicely. Same thing with the, uh, uh, the whatchamacallits, the uh, plug wires. They pretty much work in the same order. They're only going to reach and fit in one way nicely. So, I'm pretty sure this vacuum hose goes to this mechanism that I can't really tell what it actually does. Um, goes to the something on the intake manifold. And of course, before I start putting any of this on, I gotta start replacing all those gaskets. Uh, yeah, I think that guy is a little solenoid that uh, plays with pressures. This go this fuel? I don't know what this goes to. It definitely looks like a fuel line. I'm not sure if I cut that or if that just is that way. Ah, there's the guys. These are the weird valves that usually are broken for one reason or another. So I'm going to go through and test those guys out. Uh, they essentially control all of the stuff on the middle part of the intake, including this guy, with the assistance of another solenoid, that one over there, and somewhere on here is supposed to be a nipple for another, oh, it's on the other side, um, for the bigger thing that allows all six ports to be used, so, at least in my limited understanding, I probably got some of that wrong. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to go research what I need to do next. Doing this kind of one-handed right now, but I found out where some of these hoses go. This one that has the 90 degree bend goes down on that side underneath more or less the alternator around and then it bends pretty much back around 180 into the, uh, can't even really see where my finger's at. There's a nipple on there that connects up as a vacuum line to the uh, OMP injectors. So that's where that sits. That is a vacuum, not a coolant line. And then there's this one that has this other 90 degree bend. It also goes down and underneath the alternator and it rests about right there. I think that one connects up to the intake manifold somewhere. Um, let's see, how does this go? This goes on here, something like, not putting this on right now, but just mocking it up, something like that for where that sits. I'm not seeing where it should plug in. I think that right there might be a nipple for a vacuum line. Yep, it is. I'm not sure if that's the correct one, but it's one of them. One of many. And then, of course, there's all of those guys on there. I don't think that hooks up to those. This gets to vacuum lines for uh, the diaphragm right there, that kind of thing. That way they can be electronically activated. So... Spin this around so I can work with it. I'm going to start getting the gaskets on there. Got room to throttle body so I can put the new throttle body gasket on. Handful of more things, but this is starting to look up. Um, this hooks into here, more or less. And looks like it goes... Uh, like that. That doesn't seem right. That's definitely not right. That's definitely, so yeah. That's the only way that really lines up with anything. And saying that lines up with anything is optimistic because that just kind of sits over there and hovers over nothing. Now that's what, no. It doesn't work either, does it? 
gonna mock this up again real quick. There's not a good way to hold it with one hand. There we go. Okay, so that lines up with that. I don't know how this is supposed to connect into things. It's clear that this part connects in here. Oh, that reaches around to both of these guys. Okay. So I should put the uh, Y looking piece on first, and then I can put the main throttle body on. Um, not quite sure. I think there's a fuel line probably currently still in the engine bay that's supposed to go underneath to hook up to the rail. That's going to be a little bit difficult to reach once I have all of this uh, together in there. I also need to track down some vacuum lines because there's supposed to be three of them here. I don't have extras laying around, so maybe this is one of the things used for that. Where is that? There they are. No. That could be used as a vacuum line, but it's not for these. This isn't cut, is it? Is this supposed to go in here? Uh, I don't know. It looks like it could. I'm trying to match this up. Eh, if so, it's weird. I want to try to work on those because uh, those are going to be kind of almost impossible to do anything with when I have all that stuff on. But I'm going to go ahead and put the gaskets on the Y piece and put the Y piece on here. That shouldn't be in the way. Fun, fun. I swear, this is two steps forward, one step back. Um, looking at this thing, because... <laughs> what is it? All of these are labeled the same. Upper intake manifold O-ring, upper intake manifold O-ring, upper intake manifold O-ring. At least that one's called a throttle body O-ring. So, looking at this, 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 and this are the same size. So there's going to be three of those. There's only one big one like that, and then there's two of those. So let's come over here. There's one, three, and two. So... We're going to hope that those fit where they're supposed to go. Look at all those. Don't they just look grand? They actually stick out quite a bit more. I don't think that the old ones would have sealed if I just tried to reuse them. Um, I should only have one left, and that should be for the throttle body. Uh, what is this one? Air control valve gasket. That's the one that goes onto the exhaust for the air recirculation or basically the thing that has an electric blower to force air into the catalytic converter. So I'm gonna pry off the throttle body. I'm going to put that on. Then I'm probably gonna put that unit over here onto the rest of the intake. It should stay out of the way, so it shouldn't uh, get it, make anything worse. So let's go ahead and do that now. Somehow I don't think this piece here is uh, OEM Mazda. It does have a gasket on it. Is there a gasket on the back of the throttle body? Kind of, but I don't have a replacement for that because I'm pretty sure this actually is aftermarket. Jesus, that thing was stuck on there. Um, I couldn't tell you what this does, aside from just being a spacer, but no fuel goes past that. And this is already turbulent as fuck, so it can't be anything for the air. Huh. That thing looks gnarly too. This definitely costs money. It's aluminum for as light as it is. I can't even see machining marks, so it had a good bit of quality of oh, there's a part right here. Taylor Helix Power Tower. Throttle body spacer. Huh. Oh, well, that's weird. Anyway, slap on a gasket now. I wonder if I'm gonna look that up a bit later. I wonder what that costs or what its purpose even is. I could see maybe putting that on I don't know, something like some little uh, 1.4, 1.5 liter engine where the throttle body goes directly into the manifold and the manifold directly into the uh, engine. But, I mean, with this, the throttle body is over here and then it's got to go through an entire contraption into another contraption into another contraption and then finally gets sucked in. And the fuel doesn't get injected until it's, all the air and everything's about to get sucked in anyway. So it can't be for helping mix that, I don't think. Somehow, basically, I'm feeling like it maybe isn't meant for this engine. But there's a lot of quality into that part. Because like I said, there is no machining marks. So they had to have been milled in aluminum. And then they had to have gone through and finished it rather nicely. Anyway, we got the throttle body gasket on. We got the gaskets on the rest of, 
I don't know what you'd even call this, the first intake manifold. So the other one is on here and ready to go. I did lie a little bit, I guess. This nipple right here for one of the air control valves is going to be a little bit difficult to get a vacuum line onto, but we can still pretty easily get the fuel line on here, so yay. Um, this from my video of, I think it's like a second video in the series, it's supposed to rest right about here, so that's already there and ready to go. These three can tr uh, plug into the air control valve solenoids, so they're positioned and ready to go. I don't see anything else that's supposed to go near there. Hmm. Let me pick this up and flip it over real quick. Yeah, it's just those three. There's a vacuum nipple up there. There's a nipple right there. I don't see any other plugs aside from the one for the... Oh, there's a plug over there. So, there should be one straggler that should accept a tiny plug. But it's going to need to be a long cable, so it's not that. I don't know what this is supposed to connect to. This is the one. So that's going to connect up to the top. So... I need to figure out where what fuel cable is supposed to plug in there and where the vacuum lines are that's supposed to connect up to those solenoids or valves, diaphragm, vacuum, pneumatic, bullshit. Yay. Aside from that, I think I'm going to turn this over, clean up some of these connectors and plug them in. That's going to be it for me for today. I'll come back out here probably tomorrow or the day after. All right, I did my research. Um, Let's see if I can track these guys down. So, the way that the air control valves are supposed to work is when this guy is on the exhaust, this is the highest thing that get, that interacts with them. Bear with me, I'm going somewhere with this. This one back here, you see it? Uh, everything is so tight. There you go, you can see that one. Is the middle one, and then this one right here is the lowest one and that is how they connect in terms of this when it's in the engine you have the top the middle and the bottom so the top one connects to the recirculation system the middle one connects to uh, essentially the inner one over here and then the bottom one connects to this guy which actually still has a hose on it, so I'm not going insane. I thought I lost it. Um, means we can try to put, let's see, how was this supposed to go? Nope, and nope. Is this supposed to go on this thing? Possibly. I'm thinking, yeah. So I need to figure out what I did with the other hose. But that is how those all connect together. So that's awesome. We figured that out. Um, this is actually a coolant line. There should be another one on here. Yep, that top one right there. Those are both coolant. This is essentially our crankcase vacuum. I've seen where this is supposed to connect up to. It's actually, a, I think it's a fuel line. Not sure why it goes right there. I don't think there is any kind of injector. I honestly don't know, but I see where it's supposed to go on the vehicle, and then on the vehicle in the engine bay is already the fuel line that's supposed to go across the engine and connect up right there. So, see, this one sticks all the way through. I need to find something that goes from here, bends around, and then over and in to our thing. Which of these looks like it will do that? That does not look like it'll do this. This might be the uh, coolant line for the throttle body. <sighs> Essentially, I don't want to put this thing on until I can have those guys connected up because it's going to be a pain in the dick to ever do anything to those when it's in the car. I looked around in the trunk, which is where I kept most of my spare things, and I did not see anything. Um, that's just the O2 sensor cable. I did not see anything that looked like it should have been a vacuum line aside from this one. And I can't quite tell where this one's supposed to even go unless it is to the, uh, yeah, I think this does reach around and connect up to the 
air recirculation doodad. That being said, if we look around here, aside from a few spare bits, these guys all connect up to that, all four of them. I don't actually know which order. I think they're supposed to, yeah, they're supposed to go like that, whatever way they go. Um, this connects to something. Let's see about where that is on here. What looks electrical. There's an electrical doodad there that has two prongs and is rather small. There's no way that's ever going to reach up and around, I don't think. No, this takes like, there's a big separator in the middle and there's four prongs on it. I'm trying to see where that could possibly go. I'm not seeing anything on here. I'm trying to be so much careful with this because this is largely brittle plastic. <laughs> Um, wait a second, four prongs, four, okay, so that's for the uh, O2 sensor coming off of the exhaust right there where the collector's at. So it puts us down here somewhere easy to get to. I don't think there's any more stray connectors or any stray connectors that are going to be overlapped. So we can go ahead and turn this guy around a bit more. Without breaking this table, I'm going to use the word table loosely for this rickety thing because this is a baker's rack. And this is a countertop just resting on top of the posts. But it's taken away to the engine, and this is heavy. I think it's probably close to 300 pounds right now. So I made sure I get the hooks on here because I'm not moving this without the engine hoist anymore. Um, those kids are all over there. That's all connected up now. This connects to something along, oh, that connects to the throttle body. This probably connects on top to that connector on the intake manifold. Just looking around, this has to connect to something, right? Hmm, I'm trying to look between the two. I don't think it connects to anything on the intake manifold. So I'm not sure where it's supposed to go. So we're just gonna make sure it's there and accessible for the moment. We're gonna go ahead and take off these nuts and remove the hardware that I thankfully placed in there. That way I would not lose track of what went where. Because wouldn't really be a problem with a couple of these. Oh Jesus, that got bent to hell. I hope that's still gonna work. Wouldn't be a problem with a couple of these, but these plastic ones, if they got screwed in too tight, they would definitely break the uh, mid section of the intake manifold so nuts go all the way to the left mid section has these bolts i'm going to try to whack that one with a hammer and hopefully fix it as somebody drives by the open garage door and it immediately slows down and parks on the road right outside i think it's a neighbor Oh god, that one's tight. Uh, what are these, 10 millimeters? These are 10 millimeters. There we go. I don't know what we're going to do about the other one. So yeah, I'm going to hammer that one back. We're going to get this on here and see what we can do. The new crescent wrench made such a good hammer. Actually, I think I still need to whack that one. There we go. All right, now that my hands are plenty dirty, I'm going to go ahead and grab my phone as usual. Um, so this is essentially a vacuum line that a crankcase goes into the intake over here when that gets installed. Um, what is this one? This is a coolant either inlet or outlet for the throttle body to keep it cooled. There's the hose that's going to go to the recirculation unit. This hose is routed through, so the recirculation one is the top. This other one out here furthest away at the moment should be the bottom and then when i find a hose that's supposed to work for the uh one of the other mini active shutters that'll go to that middle one <coughs> itchy nose middle one in there so essentially i need something to come out then back and in so what's it gonna look like so it should have a 90 and a 180 on it so, these guys are set up and ready to go. Plugged in all the electrical connectors, mostly that I could find. Still got this one up here to do. It's 
a little bit stuck right now. Here we go. Almost up there. Bring this guy. See if we can't bring this up a bit more. Ah, there we go. Now it's not stuck. Pull till it works. <clears throat> I think here it clicked, but it's not coming back off, so that's good. These guys are pretty much, stay, they stay in order. Um, this is the shortest, this is the medium, this is the longest, closest to furthest. There we go. I uh, have a vacuum looking nipple on the other end of this, on the bottom side. I don't know where that's supposed to go, but it will be accessible when this is back in the engine bay, which we're getting very close to doing at this point. This is where I was talking about, if you guys go back to the second video I think I did on this, uh, when I had the engine out, it did not have any of the plastic shit or the alternator or anything else on here. Who do I still have on my parts table? Spark plugs, those are the old ones. Obviously, we'll put new ones in. Um, this is just a battery box with a couple relays in it. Here is a hose I think was used for coolant. I'm not entirely sure. Could be used for a lot of things right now. Actually, this one might go on top of the throttle body. That is the perfect size for that nipple. That's where we're going to leave that for the moment. So we can say we've accounted for it. I have the bracket on the other side, of course, for the uh, uh, emission coils. We'll be putting those on when we put on the spark plugs. Of course, we still have to put on the exhaust manifold and whatnot. And then the manifold gasket is back here, nice and clean and kept out of the way. Um... Of course, we have the air pump. Honestly, I could put that on one of the things already in the engine. Well, I'll put it on, uh, not now, but before we put this back in the car, though. Um, the air conditioner is over there on the floor somewhere. So I guess I'll put that on, too. Because I remember that one actually being a pain. Jesus, this is hard to believe now. That one is actually a pain to work with. <clears throat> Uh, with it still on the car, or getting it off of the engine while the uh, car was in there. I'm not sure if this connector is going to be okay or not. So I'll bring the air conditioner over. I think that's what this connector is for anyway. Oh no, this is for the oil pan. Um, and we'll see what needs to be done. This hooks in pretty easily. I don't think the connector for the air conditioner is on this part of the engine. Or the wiring harness. Oh, by the way, I looked up the Taylor Helix thing. It's like a hundred dollar part. It is actually billet aluminum, meaning they machined it and cleaned it up really damn well because I don't see a single machine mark. So that's pretty damn cool. Uh, we got our closest O2 sensor cable back there. Shit's looking up pretty good so far. Oh, I can actually plug in the throttle body. Get one less thing out of the way. Of course, probably gonna have to use zip ties because a lot of this plastic is brittle and broken already. <laughs> Yay. So I'll go zip tie that up real quick. Somehow, I'm actually not sure. I'll figure something out. And then uh, I'll go from there. Fun, fun. All right, it might've got a little bit carried away, but I've got the AC compressor on here. And it seems to be just fine, thankfully. Or it's working fine before. Um, Aside from maybe needing a little bit of cool in the system, or refrigerant in the system. Got the ignition coils on here. I was going to wait to do that till later, but I figured there's no real point in doing that. I am going to take a little bit of dollop of electrolytic grease dough and put them on each of the ends. That when I do go to plug in the plug wires, they'll already be taken care of. And of course, I'll do the same thing to the plugs when I go to put those on. Uh, the connector for this, or for the AC, is on the other harness, I believe. Um, so yeah, I don't think there's much else for me to be able to do. I could try to see about putting the other harness on here. I think, uh, <coughs> next, actually, just take these coils away now. I'll save the coils. I want to find out the hard way that, uh, one of the new ones is somehow bad already. So we're going to hold on to those, actually. Um, aside from putting on the exhaust manifold and installing the, uh, air recirculation unit we're pretty much done with this i'm gonna look at the other harness like i was saying see if i can actually put that on here now or what i need to do 
probably find out the hard way that I needed to put it on before I put on the intake system. But I don't think that's going to be the case considering I was keeping an eye on all of the connectors and everything has got a plug already. So, so far so good. Oh, what are these things going to do? This has everything on it, right? Pulley-wise. We're good to go. See, AC is in line with a tensioner and the crank, of course. And then the crank is in line with the water pump and the alternator. So we can actually put a belt on this too and tension this properly. Both belts, actually. Enter one first, of course. Um, yeah, I'll go grab the electrolytic crease and put that on there. Dielectric, dielectric, not electrolytic, dielectric. You don't want it to be a electrically conductive, more or less. Whoops. So, with that on there now, what do we have left over here in terms of parts? We have our new plug wires. You can tell by how much dust is collected that I have been waiting to do this for a while. Uh, we have our new belts. We have our new plugs. Uh, we have... Those actually came with the car, but the car doesn't need brakes, so I don't know why. Of course, our new air... Or not air God damn it. We have our new oil filter. I almost said fuel filter there too. Um, and that big white box is our new starter. There's the old one, the tiny one. Uh, and there is not only our new throw out bearing, but also our uh, clutch and pressure plate. And I'm debating on it, but I'm going to try to see about installing this uh, water temperature gauge. It's digital and analog, which is, you know, cool and all. Except it already says, I never realized that. It's uh, already above 100 degrees, so maybe not install that. <laughs> That'll be less accurate than the one that's currently in the vehicle. So, that might be it for me for today. I'm going to come out here. I'll probably come out tomorrow and start putting belts on. There's no reason not to at this point. I'll tension everything up. Um, we're kind of just at that point. When I get this on to the engine hoist is when I'll put on the oil pan and connect that. I'm assuming that's a level sensor. <clears throat> I guess I'll get this turned around and ready for the exhaust manifold. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> Yeah. That takes a bit of effort. Actually, I probably should put the belts on for it. We'll put the exhaust manifold on probably tomorrow with the new uh, gasket. So I'll grab that out from behind here before I forget about it. So I think I got enough recorded for this video. Don't want to make them too terribly long. Thanks you guys for coming along for the ride. Like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know if you enjoyed this. If you want to see more content like this, obviously we're coming to a close somewhat rapidly. Like this is, uh, the video is going to be released, you know, week at a time. So I think this one's going to go out in April, like the first Sunday in April. Um, this has been a course of like three days for me. <laughs> so hopefully uh, pretty soon we'll have this back into the car because it's, it's stacking up and looking like that's going to be the case. I mean, we've done the sewn adapter upgrade already. I'm gonna try to clean up uh, some of the stuff, like for the coolant up here. It's nice and crusty and fun. But uh, yeah, soon we'll have this thing up and running. And I can just uh, fail at driving stick, more or less. <laughs> it's been a little bit, and before, I mean, it's been a very long bit since I've driven stick in a car, because before this was driving semi, and that's a little bit easier, because Use the clutch for first gear and maybe reverse. Okay, yeah, definitely reverse. But yeah, first and reverse. And after that, you just float your way up and it's beautiful. So I hope you enjoyed. I will see you next time. Have a good one.